was the greatest trick the devil ever pulled to convince the world that he didn't exist? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, w I wouldn't say that, but that's a, a great line. And I'm a big fan of the usual suspects. So. <laughs>
um, that were all occult themed. You know, you had like the Devil's Reign that had like Ernest Borgnine and a young John right. Travolta and Race with the Devil uh, wow. that had uh, Warren Oates and Peter Fonda. And I really just liked the tone and the vibe of those. And I was just trying to think of, well, what would that kind of go with? And so, you know, I was just kind of spitballing and I was reading at the time a, a true crime book called Our Boys. And the, the, the movie's not directly inspired, but it it just kind of like took kind of like the vibe and the situation of a group of high school boys that are kind of the all American guys that are the favorite of this small town. And uh, they uh, uh, rape a disabled girl mm -hmm. and uh, it causes shockwaves throughout the community because no one believes that this group of people would do this horrendous crime. So I kind of merged the two things together and then added in some other like little influences and stuff like that. Like uh, as far as the Inquisition, uh, uh, a big influence was Ken Russell's The Devils. Oh, uh, yeah. And, I haven't seen and, that movie yet, actually. I just watched Altered States not that long ago, um, yeah. um, which kind of like, there's like little segments that kind of, because it was similar to uh, time to when I watched the trailer for it, so it kind of gave me vibes of that, but yeah. yeah. Um, and, and that's a, and also that's a one more point. was uh, Kenneth Anger with uh, Lucifer Rising, which okay. is, this, you can check it out on YouTube for people that don't know, but Kenneth Anger was this 60s kind of countercultural filmmaker that would make these very out there typically short movies and short it you know maybe like 60 minutes or 45 minutes and stuff like that and you know at the time they would combine things like uh anton levey from the church of satan or like obscure egyptian you know numerology and stuff like that so i you know i just kind of took little bits of pieces of all of that and tried to turn it into to something different and unique yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm glad that you pulled those influences from it because I love like those like late 70s, 80s kind of style movies. The atmosphere to them is just fantastic. I remember this uh, this coworker of mine told me uh, Race with the Devil is one of the scariest movies you will ever see. And yeah. because she goes, it's just relentless yeah. and not one of those movies that's going to have a happy ending either. And I was like, she was right. Great movie. Actually, I just got that one on vhs not that long ago but uh yeah that's uh, oh, i love it i love yeah. it because again and, and same thing with like the, the the devil's reign is is that you know they're they're very you know clearly right it's very pulpy material and stuff like that but if you actually pay attention they're very well executed they're yeah. very well shot they're very well staged the action scenes are all very good you can, you know, very clearly, dis, you know, decipher exactly what's going on. And the, the stories are very quick as they progress, like they just start and then they keep going. And, uh, you know, so they're, they're very kind of underrated in that regard and that they're good movies, you know. And I, I really liked that aspect of, you know, kind of trying to bring something extra to what is essentially like a, a 70s drive-in movie. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, it's great. Yeah, I love nerding out about movies like this. All right, so okay, all right, let's uh let's go ahead and bring everybody in and let's talk about how y'all got connected to the project. As far as uh, Sean and and Terrence, uh, I reached out with a casting call. You know, I I I I flung it out everywhere I could. You know, to try to pull in people, and and they were the two best uh, by far that I came across as far as uh, you know bringing something uh, that I thought would be really interesting to their per perspective roles. So they can go into a little bit more of that, but that was, you know, I just like, like, is, you know, put out flyers, put out, uh, you know, uh, web ads and stuff like that, you know, Facebook groups, like everything. And, uh, you know, sorted through a lot of, of uh, different auditions, uh, you know, remotely and stuff and would send people, you know, pages like, Hey, you know, please read this and stuff. And, uh, you know, they just came back as the, the, the best ones. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, so guys, what did you, uh, where did you get the acting bug from, and uh, what drew you to this project? Well, I've been in the industry for about three and a half years now. I started working behind the scenes. Actually, the very first film I ever helped with was an indie project, which was a horror film. So I've been in a horror, lots of horror films, and wanted to do more speaking roles. 
So this was an opportunity for a main speaking role. And so I went for it, put the best foot forward and it worked out for me. Oh, awesome. Great. Is there any kind of movies that uh, influenced you as an actor growing up as well? or? Well, believe it or not, I didn't watch a lot of horror films growing up. It was more recently since I started getting into the films and working on horror films that made me more watching them. Basically, the stuff that I worked on and other projects to help give us ideas to work on these, whether it was crew or acting. So, Okay, right on. Awesome. I've been on the scene for a long time. I've been doing a lot of gangster movies and well as in gangster roles. So I just wanted to do something different. So when I've seen the um I just got finished with the voiceover um kind of like the it was uh, the metaverse and I played like a villain. I had to change my voice like a villain. So I just came off that and I seen the audition that Craig put out. So I'm like, okay. Let me see if I can handle it. So, you yeah. know, crazy. Handle it, and here I am. I like watching a lot of horror movies like like Freddy Krueger, The Exorcist, uh, Constantine, like a lot of crazy movies, man. So I was ready to do something differently. But that's a lucky here I am. Oh, awesome. Uh, yeah, Constantine's a cool one. Uh, actually... I dig the Keanu Reeves. I know there's there's because I've I've read uh, several of the comics. There's differences with the comics, but it's a cool movie. Uh, and I I think they've been talking about doing a sequel to that. So are you this guy behind me right here? Are you the ominous uh, black wizard? Villain? <laughs> uh, uh, it was he is indeed. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, and you do have a fantastic voice. I was hearing it in the in the trailer there. Um, so uh, so question for Craig. Uh, was the greatest trick the devil ever pulled to convince the world that he didn't exist? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, w I wouldn't say that, but that's a, a great line. And I'm a big fan of the usual suspects. So, <laughs> so have, have, you, have any of you guys had any kind of experience in the occult or any kind of freaky things that have happened to you that are occult based? Yeah. Me? No, no, no. It's, it, it, you know, like, uh, it, as far as that kind of stuff, um, you know, I, I think it's it's really important, like whatever material you're you're doing to like know it thoroughly and to mean it, but to mean it kind of like on a like a Shakespearean level. So it's like if you're going to do a comic book movie, you should know it inside and out and have researched it and really put your heart into it. But do you need to believe in Superman? I don't think so. You know, it is, I, I think that you just need to have a connection with the material. And uh, so, you know, I don't have any kind of like background or anything or like that. I just kind of find it fascinating from a story story storytelling angle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's kind of, I, I remember hearing stories about like Friedkin and, yeah. uh, and the author of the exorcist and how they were kind of, kind of split on what they believed in. Yeah, you know, and and you know, like, um, which which made for a great dynamic because the whole oh, yeah. thing is because the Exorcist is all about like religion, kind of uh, battling with science yeah, and yeah. trying to trying to figure out like which which one. Um, but they kind of they kind of both work together really well in that movie, and it's great to have two different perspectives. And and um, John Carpenter also famously talks about how he doesn't believe in the supernatural, but he finds it very uh, fascinating. Well, yeah. same thing, same thing famously with H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, oh like, that's like, like, like yeah. he, he was completely, I, I don't know if you would say atheist, but at least agnostic as far as pretty much everything. He's like, but he had this sense of wonder about the universe. And, you know, he was just kind of like, okay, so what happened if something terrible like this did exist? You know, just, just you know, being creative and letting your mind wander. So it's not unusual at all. And, and, you know, I totally agree about The Exorcist. That was one of the great things is that uh, the guy that wrote it, William Peter Blatty, was a, a died in the wool Catholic. I mean, like grew up, you know, like singing in the choir and, and stuff like that and was very open about it. Right. And then, uh, say, you know, Friedkin came from a, a documentary background and then he had just done The French Connection, which was this very gritty urban crime thriller. And he just brought that same aesthetic over to like this kind of like quasi-religious movie. 
uh, which was brilliant, you know, and, and no one's been a, even able to get within a millimeter close of it since, but, you know, including the abomination that came out, uh, you know, last year. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't see that one at the theater. Yes, uh, I, I didn't <laughs> either. Like, the trailer was enough to be like, nah, I'm out. I saw it on Peacock, and I was like, oh, man. Oh, this, oh. I, well, well, I'm just glad that uh, that Friedkin didn't see it before he passed. He'd tell, he'd tell stories about Exorcist, too. He told this great story. He, Friedkin gives the best interviews. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He just goes off. He just goes nuts. Well, uh, there he was, was a straight <laughs> shooter for sure. <laughs> oh, you know? he was. Yeah, yeah. There, there was one that he told about The Exorcist too, because somebody asked him, "Have you ever watched Exorcist 2? And he's like, "No, but I heard this story about uh, these executives from Warner Brothers that went into the theater and uh, they went and sat in the back of the theater on a screening of it, and the audiences were getting pissed off when they were watching the movie, and they were like, who made this this piece of shit?' And then like one of the audience members said." Uh, some of the producers are in the back right there and the producers ran out and the, <laughs> they ran out of the theater like in the movie uh, Strange Brew when Bob and Doug McKenzie <laughs> run out from the angry crowd. It was hilarious. Yeah. And apparently they parked their car somewhere else and they had to run a long ways to get to their car. But yeah, his his interviews are hilarious. Yeah, um, that's great. <laughs> let's see. So what were uh, what were some of the, like the main challenges that you faced when you were making this movie? Um you know pretty much the same for for any shoot like the the you know we were lucky because we had a, a combination of a great cast and crew so everybody you know came up and showed up and we banged it out on time you know it's like we actually started on time and ended on time uh which is uh very very difficult to do and that's just a testament of everybody you know pulling together and you know doing a good job uh but you know there's always like little stupid things that happen. You know, it is like uh, we had one scene that involved a campfire and we had this whole setup and a series of shots set up around a campfire. And we had brought like a, like an artificial, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, it, it's like a, 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 a propane line where, you know, it'll like show flames and you can just like stack the logs on top of it. So it looks like fire didn't work and spent like an hour trying to get that to work. And it's like, all right, we'll scrap that. Now we're going to just build a campfire. Well, it had rained recently and it was cold and damp out. So it took like another hour. So something that should have taken like five, 10 minutes is now like a two hour odyssey of, are we even able going to get a campfire going, you know, out in the woods in the middle of the night. So little stuff like that always pops up, but you just kind of roll with the punches. So overall, uh, it went very well. It went very smooth and everybody did a great job. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just had to, to plan it within an inch of its life. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so cool. Well, this was great. Uh, so let's talk about, uh, just like where everybody can find, um, for, for, uh, Sean, Terrence and Craig, where everybody can find your work and find out more about the movie. Man, you can find my work all over Tubi, Tubi TV, um, Text me when you get home or Lifetime. Um, we got a couple of things out on YouTube. You just go um, click my name, Terrence Banks. It'll pull up on YouTube. And um, let me see, a couple movies I have on um, Tubi, Stepdad, uh, Love and Drugs Part 3, Poison Candy, Good Fetish Part 2 and 1, uh, A Sir Child's Christmas. Um, all on Tubi TV now. Oh, awesome. You've been busy. Well, very cool, man. Yeah. Okay, Sean, do you want to get uh, jump in? Yeah. <clears throat> so I need to set up my IMDb because I don't have a paid one yet. So all my credits that were given to me are kind of mismatched all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on that this year. But I've been on a, a lot of independent projects. I've done a lot of uh, background work and stuff you'll see, even see me in in a couple scenes from uh, Lawman Bass Reeves to The Chosen. I worked crew on a couple of those projects as well. And uh, you'll see me on YouTube as well as some other commercials and social media commercials. Some speaking, some background, some what's just credited as back as a behind the scenes crew. So Ooh, currently, awesome, currently I'm working on hopefully like five projects coming up in the next two months. All of which are supposed to be paid. 
two to three of which are supposed to be speaking. So, and cool. one's supposed to be like one's crew work on a TV show. Okay. Fantastic. Cool. Well, I look forward to more of your stuff as well. Okay. Thank you. And you, Craig? Uh, yeah. So we have, uh, we're pretty much everywhere online. So there's a, uh, just uh, beware the devil's wrath, you know, that the name of the, the project, there's a website, you, just that, you know, www.bewarethedevilswrath.com. And then it's got links. We've got Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, same thing. It's a pretty, you know, unique title. So if you just, you know, type that in, you'll find it. We've got a IMDB page up and running, um, a YouTube channel, uh, you know, the works and any of it will kind of link to the other stuff. So if you find one, you'll be able to find any of them. So, uh, but the, as far as the main hub would be the website, which has links to everything. Um, and also the trailer up there and stuff like that and some concept art. And we've got a, uh, a poster from an, an amazing uh, UK artist named Ryan Hancock coming out at the end of this month. Uh, we're, uh, currently entered in uh, some film festivals um, uh, and uh, you know we've already won some awards for the script for the feature script and you know now that the the short is is completed we're entering in some festivals and we're currently working on uh, like a public theater screening for people to be able to go to before it shows up online okay great well fantastic yeah well it's a fantastic idea for a movie it looks great um and I love, I love the fact, uh, Craig, that you did like it, like like seventies kind of, like late seventies kind of early eighties style, a thriller to it. Yeah. yeah. So I just, uh, I love that okay. kind of atmosphere, that ominous vibe. I mean, it actually yeah. makes me want to watch Race with the Devil again. Maybe I'll watch that. Oh uh, yeah. Well, it's always a good time today. to watch that because that's a <laughs> yeah. that's a fantastic movie. Uh, yeah. And uh, it, you know, I absolutely like uh, happily admit that that was a, an influence. Uh, not that it's like story-wise the same, but it just as far as like vibe, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's like that, that is very much like where we're coming from. And then we try to add, you know, kind of our, our own twist to it. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, we're very excited. You know, the, the work that these guys did for the short is fantastic. You know, we're working really hard behind the scenes to be able to get the feature rolling so that we can do even more and, and stuff because there's a lot of stuff in the script that that you know is really going to blow people's minds you know even outside of the the short that we shot so oh awesome yeah and we'll post uh updates on instagram um on the on the progress board as well too awesome uh, thank you cool um and if you're like a fan of any of those kind of movies or interested in any of those kind of movies that we were talking about uh you'll get some you'll get some easter eggs uh on okay. top of just like a regular cool horror movie it looks like so so yeah, and and thank God that uh, oh, those creatures that uh, Lovecraft wrote about do not exist in real life. Because well, imagine that shit on a cosmic know. scale. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God>. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 